Sometimes you just know something is wrong and yet can't say why. Call it intuition, call it common sense, call it what you will, we all have it at some time or another. And if you're like me, you have such reaction to Galen Strawson's critique of moral responsibility. Indeed, while Strawson's article clearly, logically, and almost inarguably proves that moral responsibility does not and cannot exist, I seem to respond, well, that doesn't seem right. It sure seems like murderers are responsible for what they do, as are saints. But despite the fact that I thus disagree with Strawson, I can't quite say why he's wrong. Lewis Poyman, however, attempts to do just this. Indeed, Poyman's paper, Free Will, Determinism, and Moral Responsibility, a response to Galen Strawson, attempts to say why Strawson's article against moral responsibility cannot be correct. Before doing this, however, Poyman asks us to remember Strawson's argument in detail. A good critique, remember, always opens with a fair account of its opponent. So then, Poyman begins, th Strawson's three-step argument goes as follows. Step 1. We do what we do because of the way we are. We act, in other words, according to our personalities, preferences, and character traits. Step 2. In order to be responsible for something, we must have had some control in bringing it about. And Step 3. We have no control over the way we are. We have no control, in other words, over our personalities, preferences, and character traits. Now, or so Strawson's argument goes, if steps 1 to 3 are all true, then we must conclude that since we cannot control the way we are, we are not responsible for what we do. Or, to put it differently, there is no such thing as individual responsibility. Now, the impl ethical implications of this are clearly large. Indeed, if there is no such thing as individual responsibility at all, then there clearly cannot be any such thing as moral responsibility. We cannot, in other words, be held responsible for the good and bad things we do. But if we cannot be held responsible for the good and bad things we do, then we cannot be rewarded or punished accordingly. Therefore, Strawson's argument concludes, it is unjust to punish or reward people for their actions, as they are ultimately res not responsible for them. Now, in order to avoid this conclusion, Poyman needs only to prove one of Strawson's three basic steps to be false. An argument, after all, is a lot like a puzzle. If one piece is missing, the whole thing is incomplete. However, Poyman thinks that it is impossible to prove either the second or third steps incorrect. He thinks, in other words, that it is completely true that both that in order to be responsible for something we must have had some control in bringing it about, and that if that we have no control over the, and that we have no control over our personalities, preferences, and character traits. Now, it might not be clear to you why Poyman would simply accept these two claims of Strawson's, but if we had a couple more months of class and I could assign you a dozen other readings, you would see that Poyman is actually pretty smart in admitting Strawson's correctness in both these claims. Therefore, then, Poyman must go after the only remaining step of Strawson's argument. He must prove it to be wrong, in other words, that we do what we do because of the way we are, that we do what we do, in other words, because of our personalities, preferences, and character traits. This claim, Poyman thinks, is the weakest link of Strawson's argument. And, in fact, Poyman is prepared to offer two arguments to show that it is not completely correct. First, Poyman points out that it is clearly possible that sometimes I can act against the way I am. That sometimes, in other words, I can act in ways that resist my personality, preferences, and character traits, and do something else altogether. For instance, even though I might be a hateful person who would prefer to beat up everyone I see, I could choose not to beat up, let's say, an old woman for no other reason than that I chose to do so. So then, in cases like this, I do not do what I do because of the way I am. Very much the opposite. Indeed, in cases such as these, I choose to do something completely different than what my preferences, personality, and character traits would normally lead me to do. We can see how, if Poyman is correct here, Strauss's argument against responsibility falls apart. Indeed, if I am sometimes able to choose what I do over and above my personality, preferences, and character traits, then, since I am con totally in control of these actions, I can be held morally responsible for them, and reported or punished accordingly. Therefore, if Poyman is correct that we are sometimes able to act in opposition to the way we are, moral responsibility exists. Now, Poyman's argument here is good in that it lines up very well, I think, with our intuitions. Indeed, it really does seem that we are sometimes able to do things in resistance to our personalities and character traits. However, the, the problem I have with Poyman is that his argument here does not give us any reason for how we are able to do this. Indeed, Poyman's arguments here seems to be a lot like a Nike commercial, demanding that when we act against our personalities and characters, we just do it. 
Now, this might actually be true, but it is not at all a philosophical argument. As we have seen this semester, philosophy proceeds by offering arguments and reason in support of the claims it makes, arguments and reasons that Poyman simply does not offer. However, Poyman does offer a second way of responding to Strassen's claim that we do what we do because of the way we are, because of our personalities, preferences, and character traits. Poyman begins this response by pointing out that there are at least two ways that we do what we do because of the way we are. First, we act as we do because our personalities and character traits give us a reason to do something. So, for instance, let's say Johnny hits Jimmy because Jimmy has green eyes and Johnny hates people with green eyes. Here, Johnny hits Jimmy because Johnny is a green eye hater. The way he is, in other words, gives him a reason to hit Jimmy. However, there is another way that we do what we do because of the way we are. Namely, sometimes we act as we do because the way we are forces us to do certain things. So, for instance, let's say Johnny hits Jimmy because of an uncontrollable arm spasm. Here, the way Johnny is forces him to hit Jimmy. Now, Poyman continues, while we are clearly not responsible for the way we are when it forces us to do something, we are morally responsible for the way we are when it simply gives us a reason to do something. This is why Johnny is morally responsible in the first example, but not in the second. Indeed, it is ultimately irrelevant that Johnny may not have chosen his characteristic of green eye hating. All that matters is, when it comes to Johnny's moral responsibility, is that none of his characteristics or preferences forced him to hit Johnny. Jimmy, that is. Now, we can see that if Poyman is correct here, Strassen's argument against responsibility does fall apart. Indeed, as long as the way we are, as long as our personalities, preferences, and character traits do not force us to act in a certain way and only give us a reason to act in a certain way, we can still be held responsible for our actions. But if we can be held responsible for these sorts of actions, then moral responsibility exists and we can be rewarded or punished according to these actions. Now, this second argument Poyman offers against Strassen is, I think, much more philosophically defensible than his first. Indeed, this second argument is not the equivalent of a Nike commercial insisting that we can just do it no matter what our preferences and personalities are. Rather, in this second argument, Poyman makes distinctions, gives supports for his claims, and goes about in an undeniably philosophical manner. The problem I have with Poyman's second argument, however, is that I have a really hard time seeing the difference between the way we are giving us a reason to act in a certain way and forcing us to act in a certain way. I have a hard time seeing the difference, in other words, between Johnny's uncontrollable arm spasm forcing him to hit Jimmy and Johnny's green eye hating giving him a reason to hit Jimmy. Indeed, it seems that Johnny does not have any more control over his arm spasm than his green eye hating and that there is thus no real difference between them. But without this distinction, Poyman's argument completely falls apart. My ultimate evaluation of Poyman must thus be great try. Indeed, I completely agree with Poyman that there is something wrong with Strassen's denial of the existence of moral responsibility. We do, it seems, have some moral responsibility. However, while I thus completely agree with the intentions behind Poyman's argument, I can't quite agree with the argument itself. It seems to me that Poyman, like myself, is not quite able to put his finger on exactly what is wrong with Strassen's argument. He is not quite able, in other words, to offer as convincing or philosophically tight an argument in favor of moral responsibility as Strassen is able to offer against it. It may thus be the work of future philosophers to do so.